All right, we are back once again with what is known as the most reliable platform in the world, the B5 S4, featuring a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, backed up by a six speed manual and all wheel drive. Um, now this one, unfortunately, has a clutch that has failed and I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to do a quick walkthrough on what's all involved in replacing the clutch on this. Um, now there's several different ways you can tackle it. Uh, what I find the easiest in this situation is to just pull the engine separately from the transmission. A lot of people would argue with me, so go ahead and drop that in the comments below. Um, but in an effort to not have to re-bleed the slave cylinder, remove the axles, um, totally disassemble the exhaust, uh, we're gonna do this instead. Um, so I'm gonna get right into it and I'll see you guys down below. My brother in Christ, you have returned. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is. Please clap. Wow. Bang up, Terry. What in reverse, Terry? Man, I'm gonna whip this hoe. All right, so here we are in the front end. Um, as you can see, I've already had a crack at getting this thing taken apart. This is what we call being in service mode. Uh, maybe service plus, since I've got the core support fully removed. Uh, but this gives us access to everything we need to pull the engine from the front of the vehicle. So, um, if this looks too intimidating, I would probably not attempt this project altogether because this is the least of your worries, getting in this position. So once we drained out the coolant, got the core support off, what we're gonna do now is go behind, unbolt the downpipes, unbolt the engine mounts, disconnect fuel lines, coolant lines, uh, power steering lines, and uh, lift this thing out all together. Should be pretty quick. All right, we have got all of the downpipes disconnected. I've got all of my transmission bolts. And now what we're gonna do is get back here and disconnect these couple of uh, coolant lines going to the back of the block. Disconnect this to separate the power steering system. Undo the wiring harness, undo the motor mount bolts, and we should be able to lift this thing out and start pulling it forward. Uh, these are going to have very similar clips to what's on your core support here, just a little bit smaller. Um, so keep track of these or else your hoses will not go back on correctly. Well, the GoPro died, but here we are. We are moments away from getting this thing out of the car. Looks like we got everything mostly detached, ready to go. It's just kind of a battle of wiggling back and forth until you can get these things to slide out. So I'm gonna work on that and I'll catch you guys once I have it back out. All right, so we got the engine out. We can inspect our throw up bearing, our uh, clutch slave there, um, input shaft. We can look at our flywheel. This all still looks good. You can see my uh, original marks on there still all line up. And then we've got the old clutch out here. And what we think failed is the self adjusting mechanism. Um, what should have happened is this should have been pressed in a like a bearing press or something to reset this thing and i did not do that so if you're going to reuse these clutches uh, make sure you reset the self-adjusting mechanism uh, but instead we're going to go ahead and put a new clutch in all right guys well out with the old um and to be honest this clutch still looks like it's okay but uh you know 
let's go ahead and go in with the new. So this is a stage four kit from Ringer Racing. Uh, definitely go give those guys a look. Um, Mike Hood, the guy who runs the company, has got a pretty fast B5 A4. Really, really wicked build. Um, but this is his company, and he definitely makes some good stuff. So uh, go, go, go check him out. And if you're looking for a clutch for your B5, definitely hit the guys up at Ringer Racing. All right, so one other thing we're gonna do to this flywheel, as well as the pressure plate surface, is uh, hit it with some brake cleaner, wipe off, uh, well, really any machining oil on the pressure plate there. But we're gonna hit this flywheel and uh, give it a quick scrub with some scr scotch Bright just to clean up the surface, um, get rid of any uh, thing that might have glazed over from that clutch slipping, and uh, then we should be good to throw it back in. And there we go, looking much better. Obviously, we don't have to get this thing mint perfect or spotless, but we do want to address anything that would have been left over from the previous clutch after it failed. So a little scotch bright, a little brake clean, looks good. On to getting the clutch installed. Pay attention when you're putting these things in, you'll see stickers on them usually that say flywheel side or transmission side. Uh, so this is gonna be up against the flywheel. I wanna make sure we orient that correctly or you're gonna have all kinds of problems. When you're doing this, try to make sure to tighten the bolts a little bit at a time, all the way around. Um, because remember, this, this pressure plate here is spring loaded, and you don't want to load one side of the spring way more than the other one, and essentially get this thing on crooked. We got the clutch reinstalled on the engine, uh, but we need to do some cleaning around here. Look at this place. <laughs> Just like that, much better. All right, let's get this thing prepped, let's throw it back in the car. Got this thing dropped back in here. It's time to get everything bolted up and uh, see if we can get this thing to start. So far, so good. The hardest part is done. We are just about ready to fire this thing up. Um, pouring in some coolant right now, and then uh, we're gonna go inside, turn this thing on, check for leaks, and start bleeding the system. So let's go do that. Let's try this again. Well, I got a little hasty with the coolant, but uh, we're gonna let the system bleed down. I had to pull the overflow hose up here so it stopped draining out. So far, everything looks, sounds good. Got a little smoke from the uh, coolant, but uh, that's all I'm seeing so far. Got no other leaks. Everything else is looking really, really tidy under here. So uh, I think that's good. 
I'm going to let it run for a little bit, warm up, get up the tent, and then uh, we'll shut her down, take it out on the road. All right, I'm gonna do my best to try to explain what's going on with my clutch here. Um, it seems that while it is grabbing okay while I'm driving, if I depress the clutch pedal all the way, it will either lock me in or out of gear. And the car will actually start to creep forward uh, while it's in gear if I depress the clutch all the way. Now, my first thought was to bleed the clutch, so we're gonna go ahead and do that in the video, uh, but I get into more of the discussion I have with Mike Hood about what could be going on with the pressure plate and the TTV flywheel setup I've got, so let's go ahead and jump to that. Okay, it's a new day, a lovely rainy day outside here in Virginia. Uh, we got the car put back together yesterday, got it on the road, did some test driving, uh, and I think I need to bleed the clutch again. Um, now I didn't pull the transmission or the clutch line for that matter, so I thought it would be okay. Um, but maybe there was just some residual air from the previous time I had the engine out. So I'm going to use my trusty Mighty Vac today to show you all the best way to get all the air out of your system. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, so I know the lighting isn't great in here. So it's gonna be a little hard to see. Uh, but to access your clutch slave cylinder, you're gonna have to get your hands deep down in here and uh, access a small nine millimeter bolt. Now on mine, it's an 11 millimeter because I've upgraded to the uh, metal slave cylinder uh, that was common on some older chassis. So if you want to get rid of your troublesome plastic slave cylinder, uh, this is an easy bolt on upgrade. So I'm gonna have to remove some of this stuff, get it out of the way, and then I'll see if I can get you guys a shot down in there and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now I don't know how well you can see down there, but this guy right here you see him? That's the one we gotta loosen. So on there, it's an 11 millimeter nut for me. If you have the plastic one, which is very brittle, it's a nine mil. So we're gonna snake our hose onto the nipple there, break it loose, and then run it up to our Mighty Vec here up top. All right, so I've got my Mighty Vec set up here. Uh, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go inside, press on the pedal a few times, and I'm gonna come out here and create a vacuum. What will happen is that's gonna draw the fluid up here and the fluid should capture in here while also pulling out any air in the system. This is gonna allow us to get all of the air out the most efficient way possible. Oh yeah, you see all that air coming out? Look at all the air coming out of here. All right, so I'm gonna keep leading this, make sure I got a good fit down there and I'll meet you guys back once I'm done. All right guys, the car is cruising pretty well. Um, no major issues, we re-bled the clutch and actually spoke with Mike from Ringer Racing and what he suggested is that some of the TTV flywheels, the, the height on them might be a little shorter and what that causes is when the clutch is fully depressed, uh, the actual fingers of the pressure plate are pushing down on the clutch causing it to start to grab again. And this makes a lot of sense when you consider the way the pedal is feeling uh, as I do that. Uh, it definitely mimics exactly what he was saying, and I think that is probably what's going on. Uh, so, in the meantime, I fitted a kind of makeshift clutch stop to get me about uh, three quarters of an inch or so of, of no travel on the bottom part of uh, the pedal. So, that seems to have done it. I might try to add some height to that just a little bit, um, but I also don't want the clutch kill switch to uh, to not work anymore. Guys, this thing is cruising. Absolutely flawless. Forgot how much I love this uh, color MFA display. No problems at all. Got the cruise control on. Heat's going. It's a nice rainy day. 